Hello and welcome to AirgunWeb.com, your home for honest, real-world airgun reviews and information where we bring you the facts, not fluff. It's been a while since we revisited the quest for the best airgun for under $200. Today we take a look at another contender for that prize, the Browning Leverage in 22 caliber. This rifle has been quietly sitting under the radar for more than a year and it's about time that it sees some daylight. Here's an overview of this very interesting rifle. The first thing that you'll notice is that the leverage is not a break barrel air gun. It has a fixed barrel with a cocking arm underneath. The rifle comes in a hardwood stock that's not fancy but looks pretty decent and definitely gets the job done. It has a raised cheek piece favoring right handed shooters. The rifle ships with front and rear fiber optic sights with the rear sight being fully adjustable. Following the trend, Browning added an 11mm to Weaver adapter to this product. This is a very practical and smart upgrade. Browning includes a 3 to 9 by 40 AO scope with a duplex reticle. This is a great scope with a clear sight picture from 10 yards up. There's a lever under the barrel that's used to cock the spring. The lever release is located at the rear of the receiver. Pushing this upward allows you to return the cocking arm back to the closed position. The lever in front of the trigger is the safety. When you cock the gun, this is automatically engaged. Cocking the gun exposes the rifle's breech where you load the pellet. This process can be a bit cumbersome at first, but you get used to it in time. The trigger is very good, breaking predictably at 2 pounds 8 ounces, with no creep whatsoever. It's a pleasure to shoot a gun where the trigger is an asset, not something you constantly have to fight with. The Browning Leverage is a pretty typical underlever spring air gun. The basic operation goes like this. You're going to pull the cocking lever until it locks into place. Now you're going to secure that lever with your off hand while you load the pellet. The cocking lever release is at the rear of the gun. You're going to push up on that and close the lever, locking it back into place. Now when you're ready, you can aim the gun at your desired target, release the safety, and gently squeeze the trigger. We'll do that one more time so you can see how it works. Pull down the cocking lever. Make sure you hold this lever and load the pellet. I'm going to push up on the release in the back. Return the cocking arm. Aim it. Release the safety. Gently squeeze the trigger. Now because of the design, the gun has minimal felt recoil. It would be a very good gun for someone new to air guns. It's very forgiving and very easy to shoot. So now let's go ahead and get to performance and accuracy. On paper, the Browning leverage should get up to 800 feet per second in 22 caliber. My test rifle was very close with the 11.9 grade hobby pellets, which averaged 780 feet per second. The most accurate pellets I tested to date have been the 14.3 grain JSB pellets. They average 687 feet per second, which comes in at 14.99 foot-pounds. The extreme spread was only 9 feet per second across 10 shots, and the standard deviation was only 2.9 feet per second. Now all those numbers are only impressive if the accuracy is there to match. At 10 yards, it was basically creating one ragged hole every time. Now here are a couple groups at 20 yards. In this first group I was not quite set having moved from 10 to 20 yards and still managed a .515 inch center to center shot group. After a minor scope adjustment and a small adjustment to my hold and technique, I got this second group measuring .416 inches center to center, again at 20 yards. So let's go ahead and take a look at our final summary. We've talked about only good stuff so far, but there were a few very small issues that we do need to go over. This gun was very crunchy out of the box. It's going to take an extended break-in period to really smooth out. Also, the rifle has some barrel droop. Browning tried to address this issue by marking the scope rings front and rear and including a rubber shim on the base of the rear mount. Unfortunately, this didn't hold up. Now I built a more rigid shim using the same method I demonstrated in Take Aim Episode 4 and it completely solved the problem. 
given that this gun retails for under $200 and that all the above issues are very easily remedied without any need to dismantle or modify the gun, I've chalked them up to be more of an inconvenience than real problems. I don't know of any other air gun that consistently delivers this kind of accuracy, energy, ease of shooting, and all the right accessories for under $200. Now, I'm not saying it's going to replace my TX200, but for folks that want good power and fixed barrel accuracy at a great price, this may be your gun. I'd like to take a moment and thank the folks at Pyramid Air for sponsoring our channel and this review. When you're looking for your next air gun or you're looking to fill your next air gun supply order, please visit www.pyramidair.com or give them a call at 888-262-4867. And please be sure to let them know that you learned about them right here at Airgun Web. When you're looking for honest, real-world air gun reviews, think Airgun Web, where we tell you the facts, not fluff. I'm Rick Utzer with airgunweb.com. Thanks again for watching.